This is Image Thief. Today, we're in Changbai Shan on the border of Jilin Province in North Korea. We've come here to have a look at the natural splendors, including the waterfall behind me. It's been something of a process getting here. Yesterday morning, we had to fly from Beijing to Yenji, which is the capital of the Korean Autonomous Prefecture in Jilin Province. And from there, we had to have a bunch of frantic negotiations with various taxi drivers who did and did not want to go to various places before we found one who would agree for, to take us uh, up to Chiang Bai Shan. But we did arrive, we stayed at a lovely hotel, and this morning we we're on our pilgrimage to go have a look at the waterfall and the world-renowned Tianche, Heaven Lake. We're not the only ones on this pilgrimage, and I use the word pilgrimage on purpose. We're surrounded by tens of thousands of Chinese tourists on group tours, and this whole experience is a little bit like making the Hajj would be if the Hajj was made entirely by Chinese tourists. Later on, we'll introduce you to the waterfall and the lake and such other splendors as we may find. The Changbai Shan mountain range sits astride the Chinese North Korean border. It's famed in both China and Korea for its natural splendor and is the source of many myths and legends, one of which tells of a terrifying monster monster that lives in the majestic Heaven Lake. A more contemporary myth has it that Kim Il-sung, the late founder and great leader of North Korea, was born on Chiang Bai shans sacred slopes, but historians believe he was most likely born in Russia. In search of enlightenment, Mrs. Image Thief, my father, and I set off on our journey, braving the dangers of the valley floor. It wasn't long before we reached the waterfall that flows from Heaven Lake into the valley and beheld the dizzying climb that we would have to make if we wanted to see the mysterious lake for ourselves. We arrived at the waterfall now and we've started our descent up towards the lake and as you can see it's quite an ascent. I'm sure it'll all be worth it at the end but for the moment it's making me think that maybe the summer palace wouldn't have been all that bad an idea. And so we climbed and climbed and, for variety, we climbed. But we were rewarded with beautiful views of the top of the waterfall, with flocks of swifts circling overhead, and with even more glorious views back across the valley where we had started our hike. The source of the raging waterfall turned out to be a placid creek, but placid or not, there was definitely something special about it, as Mrs. Image Thief discovered. Here we are, the Heaven's Lake, and we noticed that a lot of people have thrown coins into this bit of stream here. So I think I'll join the crowd and make a little wish for um, a strong and happy child soon. We're still waiting to see how that turns out, but River Mojo makes us hopeful. So after a long and brutal climb, we've arrived here at the isolated splendor of the lake. As you can see, it's just beautiful, but uh, we're hardly the only people up here. It's quite interesting, they appear to have captured the legendary monster of Heaven Pool Lake and bronzed it. And of course, the other interesting thing is that on the far side of the lake is North Korea. So this is my first time seeing North Korean territory. I had thought on the way up that I might take this opportunity to BA the dear leader, but with the number of people up here, I may rethink that plan until we can find a more isolated spot. You just give him the finger. Uh, it doesn't have the same... <laughs> well, thank you for taking care of me. And so we set off on our exploration of the lakeshore. Everyone we met seemed to be having a good time, but no one could report any confirmed sightings of a live lake monster. Monster or not, one of the great things about tourism in China is that no matter how remote a location you go to, you're never all that far from the serving of grilled cuttlefish. Very short of good skipping rocks here. One skip, what a waste. Skipping rocks were in short supply, but insects weren't. For some reason, thousands of them were drowning themselves at the water's edge. It was fascinating, but also time for a break. After arriving at the lake, we climbed our way a bit up the ridge line to find a little piece of solitude. Uh, there's really no concept of peace and quiet down there amongst the Chinese tourist mob. Everybody seems to be having a pretty good time. But up here, we've been able to enjoy a, a wonderful view of the lake and of the border-like crags of North Korea. And uh, it's proving to be very pleasant here among, among the wildflowers and the birds. Our pleasant and relaxing lunch on the ridge gave way to the brutal slog back down to the valley. It's a dead damn that steep. 
We hadn't seen a live monster at the lake, only a bronzed facsimile, but we would have another chance. Our next stop would be the summit of one of the high peaks overlooking the lake, and this time we wouldn't have to walk. Well, we're now here at the SUV, which you take to get up to the top of the big, big peak, which you can't actually walk to unless you're, you're a fully equipped mountaineer. They extracted another 80 quai per head for, for this. Uh, but in return for our money, we have the pleasure both of the fine music you can now hear playing and of a ride which mirrors a Disneyland e-ticket in terms of its overall level of excitement. <laughs> If you're looking for a solitary mountaintop retreat, this is not the place. It's so crowded that you're only allowed 40 minutes at the top, but the views are once again magnificent. So, after long labors and an oxygen-deprived climb, we have ascended onto the very top of the peak, the Zufeng, the ultimate peak here at the, at the Changbai Shan. Below us is Tianxia, the heaven pool, and two feet to my left, is a sheer drop of about 500 meters to gnarled rocks below. So I'm trying very hard not to be blown to my left by a gust of wind. Behind me, once again, we have a spectacular vista of North Korea. We've learned that on the far side, there's a road there and a North Korean tourist installation, which came as a surprise to us because we didn't know that North Koreans had tourists. And apparently, as we are here watching them, they are there indulging in their own oxygen-deprived climb so that they may watch us. I hope it's entertaining. Despite a commanding view of the lake, there was still no evidence of any monsters prowling its waters. So we settled down for some chocolate and the kind of meaningful father-son conversation one has on the windswept North Korean border. You made a Manchurian candidate with Russia. I've never seen the movie. Being brainwashed by the North Koreans. Man, I might have to get a perm. Um, well, right. I mean, isn't that what you do? Unwash your brain? No, no. Like if you're a little bit of a perm. He's got a perm. You think his hair is naturally like that? No. Well, exactly. That's how you can tell somebody who's been brainwashed by the North Koreans. Yeah. Yeah. Well, exactly. Yeah, I want to make a certain amount of stuff. <laughs> With these important academic matters settled, we enjoyed one last look at the view before heading back down to our hotel. There, we enjoyed a truly surreal dinner performance and then settled in for a good night's rest in preparation for the long journey home. Well, here we are on the train. We're now into something like our 16th hour. On the whole, it's been pretty good. The train's a little bit weird. We're here in the hard sleeper class, which is a new experience for me. It's not the bottom, it's the intermediate class. Uh, and it's generally pretty comfortable, but it has some interesting quirks. For one thing, they infantilize you a little bit. Uh, the lights go off when the lights go off, and you go to sleep. And then the lights come on when they come on, and you get up. And you're basically told where to go, and what to do, and how to act, and to straighten up, and brush your hair, and be polite to your elders. And, there's a lot of noise, most of which comes out of the PA speaker, which is belting out the Chariots of Fire theme as we speak. It's a little bit disconcerting because it's the last thing you hear before you go to sleep and the first thing you hear when you wake up. But at least they don't run it all night. We'll be in Beijing in about three hours, and after that, we're looking forward to a fine breakfast that involves no instant noodles or dried fish. And soon enough, we were indeed back on the outskirts of Beijing. But we had the memories of another great trip and the conviction that even though we hadn't seen the lake monster, the misty hills of Changbai Shan might yet hide a few mysteries. <laughs>